Alright, hi, I'm Andrew Bunnell, and uh, now I'm going to tell you how to set up and tune the Earth's field nuclear magnetic resonance. In a previous video, we showed you how to set up the oscilloscope for this experiment, and we already have everything set up, and so let's, let's watch alarm decay and listen to the alarm decay as we charge it for three seconds, and there we go. We have a nice long decay of a couple seconds. Right here, each box is a half a second, and so we see a decay of about two and a half, or even longer, uh, three or four seconds up here. Uh, now, channel one is plugged into the preamplifier. Channel two is set ch connected to the NMR signal output. Now, on this particular device at Hope College, this port doesn't seem to be working right now, so don't use that port. And then uh, the external trigger is set to the oscilloscope trigger. Okay, so we see a nice long decay. Now, to, to initially tune and set this up, we're going to show you what it looks like um, without the earth field NMR. So I'm going to unplug the power from the back of that unit. And that takes out the very small gradients in the X, Y, and Z direction that I've added to help balance or make the Earth's magnetic field more uniform. And we'll talk about that more in another video. And so now that I've just taken out those gradients that I've added, let's see how long our decay time is. We heard a very small, just little bleep. And taking some data, let's move our cursors over. And I get a decay time of about 200 milliseconds. That's about as good as you can get inside a building because inside a building, the Earth's magnetic field is fairly non-uniform. One of the reasons why it's very non-uniform in this room is, is there's a very large steel or iron box over there, the atomic force microscope. So now let's line their camera up and talk about how we adjust these dials. The first thing we do is we have to tune our pre-amplifier. And so there's a little tuning circuit. There's a diagram in the book. You can look that up. And so we want to just look at channel one before we get to the band path amplifier. And so you turn off channel two by clicking the channel two button twice. Position channel one in the center. And now we're only talking about 200 milliseconds. So let's also position our spot right there close to the middle. And then zoom in. And the signal's a little bit weak, so let's increase our voltage. And then we'll scroll back over just a little bit. Ah, let's zoom in one more time. And we'll take one more, one more set of data, which will give us a better reading on our oscilloscope. Now, it's, it looks bumpy, but that's okay. Some of that bumpiness is due to the AC that's running in the walls and in the lights. And there's also some other magnetic fields around. Um, there's other electricity like, like uh, no, I don't know. Let's just keep going. <laughs> so this is what the signal should look like when you have your uh, tuning coils tuned correctly. Let's use my cursors again and show you that it's about 200 milliseconds. I'm going to take the water out of the inner solenoid coil. Here's the water bottle, and I'm going to do it again, and we're going to see what just the coils themselves look like. All right, so the coils transient itself, cursor, um, there's to the end, and there's the beginning. This right now has a relaxation of about 31 milliseconds. I could probably drag this one out just a little bit further, about 44, maybe 50 milliseconds. The manual talks about cutting off the first about 50 milliseconds so you're not confused by that transient foot. Now I'm just going to go ahead and untune the, the coil and you should start with both the coarse and fine knobs pointed about straight up. And if you listen right now there's actually more noise in this range than there was at that previous tuned frequency. So I'm going to turn the sound down just because it's a little bit annoying and I'm going to take one more reading so that we can see what it looks like. Alright, the transient got just a little bit shorter. Uh, 
for sure, for sure. Went down to about 27 milliseconds. I'm going to go ahead and put the water back in. And take another reading. As you can see, it got just a little bit bigger, but it's so small that we can't really determine or distinguish that between the, the transient of the coil and adding the water. So by having both of these knobs straight up, that would represent the Earth's magnetic field approximately at, uh, the frequency correlates to the Earth's magnetic field being approximately 50 microtesla. And to increase the frequency, we would turn both these knobs um, counterclockwise. And to decrease the frequency, we would turn both of these knobs clockwise. You can do a, you can do a little plot and find out what the frequency setting is for each, each position. But I have, have set this up, and I know I'm going to have to turn my sample tuning coil to, to the right or clockwise. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to go one position at a time and take a look at the oscilloscope. It looks like it got just a little bit better, so I'm going to try it again. And you have to wait about three seconds for it to charge. It got a little bit better, so I think I'm going in the right direction. And then you have to wait for a cool down time, about three seconds, and this, is, this helps prevent the magnet or the solenoid from overheating. And it looks a little bit bigger, so I, I think I'm going in the right direction. That time it got a little bit smaller, but the de overall decay time was still good. Now, it only got smaller at the first part near the transient, so I'm not so worried about that. All I'm worried about is the length and the size of the decay time. So let's go again, one more click. That time to me it seemed like it got noticeably smaller. So I clicked it twice to see how far I was. I was one, two, sorry, this is the fully clockwise. One, two, three. Seemed to be the best. Um, the best, but maybe it was this one. Let's take one more look at this. Oscilloscope setting. This is four clicks. Mm, I I would say three clicks look better. Even though the transient was smaller, the overall signal to me looked better. Now with the fine knob, I would recommend trying two clicks at a time uh, until you find a stronger signal and uh, then after that try to fine tune it with just a single click. So I'm going to go ahead and click it two to the clockwise only because I've done this before and there's only about 15 settings to save you some time to watch the video. It looked like it got just a little bit better. Let's do it again. Two more clicks. Yeah, it got better again. Oh, two more clicks. and it got better again. Let's try two more clicks. And it got a little bit smaller. So, I'm going to go back to this setting right here. I've tested beforehand and I found that this particular setting was the best. And it was, it's close. I could maybe fine tune it one, one click to the left or right, but that's a pretty good signal. Now from here, we need to start looking at tuning the bandpass filter. Now to tune the bandpass filter, um, so right now we've been looking at before the bandpass filter. The bandpass filter will filter out the high and the low frequencies and only let a certain range, about 100 hertz, through. And so we start out with the 5, and we're going to turn on channel 2 and turn off channel 1. Now we're going to position channel 2 there in the middle and we're going to 
we can leave it about one volt. Now the bandpass filter will will increase the strength of the signal if we get the right frequency range and decrease the other signals that are unwanted, like the 60 hertz noise. So let's go ahead and start at 5.0 and take a measurement. And that's pretty strong. Now go ahead and turn your dial one full turn at a time. Like I'm going to go to 4.0. That was a little stronger. Let's try 3.0. And that was weaker. And what that tells me is that my optimum setting was probably between 5.0 and 4.0 because those two signals were about equal. And then when I went too far, it started to decrease. And so I'm going to just go right to the halfway point, 4.5, and charge. And that's a fairly strong signal. Now I can fine tune adjust it a little bit, so I'm going to only go. Uh, two on the small dial to the and that didn't seem to have a whole lot of change so let's try two on the dial the opposite direction and once again that was almost the same ignoring that transient up at the front for the for the uh, the coil that was roughly the same and so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it back to 4.5 and take a look at my final signal. And there's my final signal without using the earth field gradient. My, let's see, cursor, my total signal is around 220 milliseconds for my decay time. And I could zoom out, let's, oh, actually before I zoom out, let's take a quick look at what the frequency is. And to do that, we actually zoom in. Okay, so we zoom in until we see the, the dotted sine wave, but we have to take another measurement so the oscilloscope can take a better image. And now we have a nice sine wave on our screen, and we click Measure, and Channel 2 says a frequency of 18, uh, sorry, one, 1812 hertz, or 1.82 kilohertz. And if you do the math for 18.2 kilohertz, it says the Earth's magnetic field in this room is approximately 42 microtesla. And that's it for tuning the Earth-filled magnetic resonance uh, coil. Next, we'll talk about the Earth-filled NMR coil controller. Thanks for watching.